Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Flash flood watch still in effect for eastern parishes. St. Thomas School ordered close after structural damage detected. And later in sports, World Under 20 record holder on the shortlist for World Athletics Rising Star Award. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. The Flash The Flash Flood Watch remains in effect for low-lying and flood-prone areas of St. Mary, Portland, St. Thomas, Kingston, St. Andrew, and St. Catherine remains in effect. Now, the Met Service says the watch will continue until 5 this afternoon. Now, a broad area of low pressure located across the Central Caribbean continues to produce a large area of cloudiness with showers and thunderstorms and is expected to linger across the region through to Friday. The forecast is for mostly cloudy conditions with periods of showers and thunderstorms, which could be heavy at times to continue affecting mainly eastern and central parishes through to Friday, especially during the afternoons and continuing into the nights. Due to persistent rainfall across sections of eastern parishes and St. Catherine over the past few days and the likely soil saturation, any additional rainfall could result in flash flooding and possible landslides. Days after a magnitude 5.6 earthquake struck the island, the Yalis High School has been ordered closed due to structural damage. After the Municipal Corporation inspected the school, it determined that a section be cordoned off. The school's principal, Mark Malabva, explained that the area which is compromised houses several classrooms. The challenge that we are having is that Block C um, houses the canteen and the, our main tuck shop. It also houses one of our r and labs, um, the lower school bathroom and the English department. Closing down that block has, would have had serious implications, significant implications for the school's operation. In light of this, face-to-face -face classes have been suspended and students will now have to transition to online for the next few days. The, the truth is that um, the damages appear more, now appear more extensive than we initially thought. Um, you know, so it, it, it's best to take all of these precautionary steps um, because it has serious implications for the safety of our students and the safety of our teachers. The Richmond Vale Road in St. Thomas has now been cleared after being rendered impassable due to huge boulders which fell following Monday's 5.6 magnitude earthquake. Now several communities were affected. Residents are now able to ply to go through the thoroughfare after communications manager at the National Works Agency, Stephen Shaw, said the agency would be engaging contractors with heavy-duty equipment to assist with clearing the roadway. Now, in the meantime, the agency says it is doing all it can to speed up the process in clearing roads in other areas. A counselor in St. Catherine is calling for early warning systems to be placed at all government buildings as one response to emergencies like earthquakes. It comes as Jamaicans continue to assess the responses to Monday's 5.6 magnitude quake. Krista Campbell has that story. When the 5.6 magnitude earthquake shook Jamaica on Monday, admittedly many Jamaicans did not know or remember how to respond. In Clarendon, concerns were raised that while the municipal corporation followed the safety protocols and evacuated staff to designated areas outside the building, next door, the parish court and tax office, as well as some schools, banks and other businesses, reportedly operated like it was business as usual. Meanwhile, in neighboring St. Catherine, the principal for Ascot High praised the school's disaster response plan and a recent fire drill for the prompt response of students and staff. So the siren um, went off and students were evacuated as per their route and we assembly in the assembly area 
and we account for our students and once the all clear signal has been given by the disaster team, we return the students to the class. He said a blowhorn also helped him explain to students what was happening and give them directives like maintaining their lines to return to class when they were given the clear to do so. However, it was not that smooth sailing for other institutions in the parish, prompting Portmore Mayor Leon Thomas to suggest mandatory emergency drills for all business places in the municipality. Places like the supermarkets and things like that, I think that they should have earthquake drill and um, to see how best we can educate the public, um, how we can also secure ourselves if the need arises. For Councillor Fenley Douglas. I will be going out there to seek funding from my private sector friends to see how best we can put something in place to have a community disaster warning system where it would be triggered by the police or the fire department. And he stressed the need for similar considerations to vulnerable areas in Portmore like the coastline. We are in a season which is a hurricane season. I have been calling for this for years now that our gullies, our drains that carry heavy water to the sea should have some sort of early warning system or marker in those gullies, including the one on the dike road. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. To other news now, the authorities are warning that tough action will be taken against transport operators who do not use designated areas in St. Mary. The transport minister and members of the municipal corporation visited some of the problem spots. The traffic chaos will not be tolerated. That's the stance of stakeholders in St. Mary. They say taxi operators have been a nuisance over the years, but it's becoming more unbearable. Chairman of the St. Mary Municipal Corporation, Richard Creary, says while the requisite infrastructure has been put in place for the taxi operators, it is not used on a frequent basis. He says the longest period of use was eight weeks. But Transport Minister Daryl Vaz, who toured the town center, says that cannot continue. Hence, he says there will be an expansion of the current transport sector working group to look at the issue in the parish capital. We'll make sure that we come up with a sustained plan with the mind of the stakeholders to return to the transport center to make sure that whatever needs to be done at the transport center is done in the shortest possible time and most importantly that this is something that will continue not for a week not for two not for a maximum of eight in perpetuity it's the only way to take back the roads and get the roads off of the road. Mr. Vaz is therefore calling on the National Security Minister and other high-ranking members of the JCF to make the resources available. It cannot be that those additional boots on the ground are specifically being targeted for areas that have high criminal activity because what will happen is that these areas that we are not paying attention to, which start out as they start out in the discipline on the road, will then just automatically get to the point of where we will have to have the same type of police or the same type of policing techniques in these rural townships and communities. For chairman of a corporation, Mr. Creary, he is hopeful that the use of the car parks by both commuters and the taxi operators will resume in the upcoming festive season. By Christmas, we should have the facility working. Um, all the things are in place to have it done, and it is just the enforcement we need. While there is a need for infrastructural upgrades, Mr. Creary says those will be delayed. But why? It doesn't make sense. For us to take hundreds of thousands or millions of taxpayers' money, invest again in the facility as we have done in the past, for it to work for a week or two. So once I see it working over a sustained period, we will do all the work that is necessary on the facility. 
As the country continues its fight against dengue, the St. Mary Health Department is reporting that the caseload remains low. Chief Medical Dr. Sidney Powell says this is due to a collaborative effort. This, I think, has to do with our Infection Prevention Control Committee not only advising the, the patients who come to us, but also relatives with regards to the precautions that they need to take um, to, to avoid um, dengue and the complications from, from dengue as well. So um, it's all part and, and parcel of, of the regional effort to include mainly primary care and that close liaison that we have with primary care. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News. Stay with us, more stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. The Caribbean region may not be making progress with poverty reduction. That's according to principal of the University of the West Indies Mona campus, Professor Denzel A. Williams. Professor Williams, who was speaking in St. James, says a robust and resilient social security system is needed to ensure the issue is addressed. Now, Professor Williams says what is needed, too, is a sustainable economy. Now, he says this will require several approaches, and we do apologize for that insert. And it's now time for the Business Minute. Listed company Supreme Ventures is reporting net profit of $408 million for the third quarter ended September 30. This represents a small decrease of $18 million or 4% compared to the similar period in 2022. Supreme Ventures says the lower profits were due primarily to increases in selling, general and administrative expenses of $364 million and finance costs of $158 million. Further afield, the U.S. Federal Reserve announced a hold on its key interest rate. In a press conference on Wednesday, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said interest rates for the benchmark lending rate would remain the same. It's at its highest level in 22 years, which translates to higher interest rates for loans on things like mortgages, credit cards, and car loans. Inflation has moderated since the middle of last year, and readings over the summer were quite favorable. But a few months of good data are only the beginning of what it will take to build confidence that inflation is moving down sustainably toward our goal. And that's it for the Business Minute. Now for the top regional and international stories. Thanks, Karen. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Spencer Darlington will have your midday sports report.